Uh, watch this chat, then we'll do one, one, only one sneak peek episode, one gander at a master chef. Because today's stream is gonna be very long, and I don't have a plan, and I don't really give a shit to be honest. We're just gonna do whatever. Okay, it's gonna be a long stream though. We're, we're gonna do a, a content mix up. It'll have all, I don't get why, why Food is arguably the best thing about being alive. No other bodily pleasure is enjoyed multiple times every day and never gets old. It's an expression of culture, our parents' love, and a means of celebration or comfort. That's why it hits a special nerve when we're told we should change what and how we eat to fight rapid climate change. One of the most delicious foods, meat, gets the worst press. It doesn't help that the topic is really hard to properly research yourself, and that debates get emotional quickly. I love meat, But clearly, science can give us an answer. The reality is, well, it's complicated. Let's take a look at three climate arguments against meat that are used a lot and see what happens. Should be right. One, does our diet really play that big a role in climate change? Feeding billions of people is impossible without causing emissions. Even if someday we have zero carbon tractors, refrigerators and cookers running on renewable energy and electric trucks to move our food, there are still unavoidable emissions. Rice emits methane. We cut down forests to make room for pastures and crops. Wait, rice? And we methane? emit nitrous oxide when we use fertilizers and manure. Worldwide food production is responsible for about 26% of all human-made greenhouse gas emissions. Which is unfortunate, since food is not optional. Oh, wow. While 26% Do like doesn't thing? sound that bad, it means that even if we extinguished all other sources of emissions today, the emissions from food alone would still use up our entire carbon budget by 2100. So, no matter how we twist and turn it, food is a real driver of climate change. Still, emissions from different food items vary a lot. How do things look when we compare their footprints separately? Food's climate impact is most often based on life cycle assessments, an analysis that looks at all the emissions of a product throughout its existence, from production to transportation, packaging, use and waste management. Okay, fair. In the most detailed meta-analysis of life cycle assessments to date, beef emissions stand out at the top. On average, a kilogram of beef emits 71 kilograms of CO2 equivalents. Lamb is also high at 40 kilograms. Pork emits 12 and poultry 10 kilograms. Well, at the bottom, we crazy. have lots of plant-based foods. Potatoes, for example, emit around 150 times less than beef. Damn. The most important aspect of food isn't weight, though, it's nutrient density. A kilogram of beef would keep you alive much longer than a kilogram of potatoes. So how does the ranking change if we compare emissions per calorie or protein? Not much. Animal protein is still the most costly for the environment, and beef and lamb are also outliers in emissions per calorie. But is this fair? After all, not all beef is the same. There are all sorts of ways to rear cattle, from pure grass-fed to factory farming. The worst beef comes in at 105 kilograms of emissions per 100 grams of protein, the best at only nine. A tenfold difference. Hey, that's pretty good. In contrast, most other foods, especially plant-based, have a much narrower spectrum. Still, the best beef is worse than the worst plant. Okay, but this seems promising. Can we buy okay. the right beef and lower our emissions? Maybe by buying locally produced beef to minimize our footprint? Two. Chat, Does buying really local. Yeah, the real question I have, chat, is, it's very hard to get an answer for this. Can you truly replace it, though? Yeah, like, for what you get out of it, for what you get, for what, for what it gives your body, whatever, can you replace the exact thing that it gives you that, that you need and want with something else? Possibly. Supplements. Is it the same molecular structure, or whatever, that, that gives you some. Boom. Uh, you are uh, if you supplement okay food actually matter let's stick with beef since it's such an outlier it's just protein i don't think it's i don't think that works i don't think i don't think you can just say it's just protein maybe i heard it wrong somewhere but i'm pretty sure it's not just protein. it's much more complicated than that 
By buying locally, you are trying to avoid emissions from transportation and packaging. But it, it turns out these only account for 0.5 to 2% of beef's total emissions. Actually, transport and packaging combined are only about 11% of all food emissions. Nearly all food transport emissions are produced over the last few miles, the regional travel on the road supplying the markets and shops in your area. International food transport happens mostly on freight ships, which are insanely efficient. For example, really? shipping one kilogram of avocados from South America to Europe generates about 0.3 kilograms of CO2 equivalents in transport emissions and around 2.5 kilograms overall. While one kilogram of hey. beef from your local butcher will come in at 18 kilograms in CO2 equivalents at least. Jesus. So even when shipped great distances, emissions from almost all plant-based foods cause lower emissions than locally produced animal products. Okay, so if transport doesn't play a big role, what causes the vast amounts of emissions from beef then? Uh, the, by the far cows. the largest share of beef emissions consists of methane released directly by the animals. While CO2 hangs around for centuries, methane only stays Ch in the... What if you were to, to um, mind the language, to plug their butt with some sort of machine? Like some sort of gas mask for the butthole, like a butt plug with a mask on it. And it would, it would use or transform the gas or some shit. No? Okay, forget it. The atmosphere for decades. But in these short periods, it is very powerful. All in all, methane has already caused 23 to 40% of human-made warming so far. There's controversy about how bad this is exactly, and we don't want to dive in too deep here. But the way guys, thing... I don't know what methane does. I don't know what it does. I thought you could, you, 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 you could plug it with a, with, a, with, a, with a can, okay? And it would fill the can full of, of, of methane when they, when they fart, and then you would have free fucking methane bottles, and you could use them for fucking, I don't know, fucking... Stand, don't know any kinds format. of extra emissions are not great. Still, all cows burp and fart to similar degrees. What explains the spectrum of beef emissions? There are a couple of things. It makes a difference if the beef comes from a dairy herd or one dedicated to beef production. 44% of the world's beef comes from dairy cows, sharing its footprint with dairy products. Okay, fair enough. Dairy cows tend to get higher quality feed, which makes them grow faster and emit less methane. Geography also plays a role because it determines which farming methods are possible. The worst factor by far is the destruction of forests for farmland. Not only does this release the CO2 that was bound in the flora, it sets free carbon that was stored in the soil and destroys its ability to store it in the future. Oh. This aspect accounts for much of the range of emissions in beef. The worst emitters are farms burning down rainforest for farmland, especially in Brazil. There is a sinister truth hidden here. The more animals suffer, the better they are in terms of climate change because they are way more efficient. Oh, no. They use less land and their food is brought right to them, and so they grow faster and don't expend energy on things like walking. Cattle in a factory farm that never That's get to roam pastures can sometimes be less destructive for the Wait. climate than... Wait, so if you were to push and say, guys, stop the climate change or whatever, and you were to, you were to push it, couldn't they say that, okay, sure, man, then let's fucking boost up on roids and bullshit and put them in a smaller container and... And then it's, it kind of gets harsh and harsh. Cattle grazing them, peacefully on a formerly lush piece of rainforest. But isn't it a bit out of touch with reality to demonize cows so much? Some of the land these animals are grazing on isn't suitable for crops anyway. By grazing on pastures, they can turn things we can't digest into food. Isn't farming animals just a I smart way to make the best use of unused resources? Three. Don't yeah, cows mainly use land that we can't use for agriculture or other things? About half of the world's ice and desert-free land is used for agriculture, an area the size of the entire Americas plus China. Wow, Half okay. of all agriculturally used land is dedicated to animals. Most of it is grassland, 65% of which cannot be converted to cropland. So pasturing animals is actually a very efficient way to use those areas since we can't grow human food there anyway. There are a couple of catches here though. Oh. While the idea of cows turning useless grass into steak is nice, it is part of a marketing lie. Oh. Even though it is so massive, Pasture land alone can't support the ruminants living on it. Globally, grazing systems sustain only 13% of beef production. So if we were to switch to 100% grass-fed, we'd simply have to eat much less beef. 
In the US, beef production would crash by some 70% if it were to exclusively rely on grass. The only way to sustain our high demand for meat is by growing crops and feeding them to our cattle. And we haven't even talked about chicken and pigs, which exclusively eat feed crops. Because of this feed demand, less than half of the world's cereals are used directly as human food. 41% is fed to animals. The same is true for soy. There's a lot soy. of talk about Amazon deforestation for soy production, which makes us think of soy milk and tofu. But only 19% of global soy, soy production goes towards tofu. products for humans. About 77% is used to feed animals. Besides, land without food crops isn't automatically ecologically useless. Like tofu? A beef-free diet would free up around 2 billion hectares. A vegan diet would free up around 3 billion hectares of land. We could use this land to grow forests or restore wild grasslands. Basically anything that could suck carbon out of the atmosphere. <laughs> if we spared 3 billion hectares of land... Because my brain's going to explode. So, so if, if you treat the, 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 the cows nice, right, and, and the grass fed, a bad the environment if you put them in if you put them in boxes and 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 you roid them up and you uh, then it's good for the environment but it's bad for them and then and then fuck man it, it could remove about 800 what billion do? tons of co2 from the air over 100 years by comparison we emit about 50 billion tons of co2 equivalents per year at the moment stop eating it okay. okay to summarize Food is a huge driver of emissions. Meat, but especially Modern beef, is the worst food in terms Israeli of emissions. Buying locally does not... Life. ...when the soy crops are prepared, the machines dig the soil and everything in its way. Then add pesticide to kill bugs and rodents. There's also... ...have a big impact on food emissions compared to the type of food you're consuming. When it comes to beef, Cattle that are grass-fed can sometimes even be counterproductive because they just need much more land. Even if you find the most environmentally friendly beef in the world, your burger still comes with a significantly higher carbon footprint than a veggie patty. You can decide for yourself what you want to do with this information. In fact, you are always only one decision away from making a change. You could start learning a new skill or dive into a new interest today. You don't get it. It's up to you. If only that first step wasn't so hard to take. don't get it. We have something for you to make it a little easier. We are big fans of Skillshare, an online learning community that offers thousands of classes for all skill levels in tons of creative disciplines like illustration, animation, or film and video. There's something for everyone, really. Unlimited access oh, cool, to all the classes is less than $10 a month with an no, no, annual no. premium they membership. They would still be able to do their number the first two. 1,000 Kurzgesagt viewers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Since we started working with Skillshare, you, our viewers, have taken... Thanks so much for the video. Very nice. Skillshare Pac-Man.